once again, sir, thank you for uh, allowing to to appear in in my channel. Uh, as you know, uh, my channel is a genealogical channel, so uh, a lot of my discussions focus really on different aspects of family history. Just for the sake of our viewers, can I have your name and your relation to the current Sultan of Sulu? Hi, hi. Hello to all your viewers. Uh, my name is Dati Sadja Batri Pares Wilson. I am the Secretary General and Royal Ambassador of the 35th Sultan of Sulu in North Borneo. Ampun Sultan Haji Mwedzulail Tan Kiram. Who is Sultan Mwedzulail Tan Kiram? Uh, his father is the former uh, uh, Sultan Mahakuta Abdullah Kiram uh, and close the grandson uh, of, of the recognized uh, uh, Sultan during that time. So he is the legitimate Sultan of Sulu. Uh, there are uh, we, other claimants after 1986. But uh, as of 1974, when his father was uh, officially recognized by then uh, President Marcos, um, he was also recognized as the heir apparent or Raja Muda of Sulu. When did he become the official Sultan of Sulu? Uh, a few years ago, uh, officially, he, he was uh, crowned by the people of Sulu um, by the same imam that crowned his grandfather um, and he was crowned in 2009 uh, uh, sorry 20 to 2012 officially uh, and then henceforth he has called himself uh, Sultan Medjulay Tantiram but prior to that he was officially Raja Muda next year we'll be celebrating our uh, 10th year of official enthronement uh, we were hoping that you know, uh, people re realize the value that um, Sultan Wedzul is doing because he's not, you know, he's not just, well, just like his father and grandfather before him, um, they're trying to help the people of Sulu. There is one major difference. During his father and grandfather's time, they actually had some sort of power and, and privilege. Yeah. Um, and not to mention uh, a little bit of income. Sultan Wedzul is poor. Compared to the other um, uh, other claimants, so to speak, who have their own businesses and private businesses, the Sultan Wedzul is a simple person. Um, so this that is why one of the reasons kung bakit hindi niya maassert yung sarili niya. He may have all the documents, he may have all the legitimacy, but he does not have the finances to do so. And it's very sad for a Sultan to be poor. You know, many of our supporters are coming from around the world, and whenever he, they, 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 you know, we, we uh, the Sultanate of Sulu, like myself, uh, survives on volunteers. So there's a lot of us around the world that volunteer for the Sultanate of Sulu, and that's how the Sultanate survives. We, we gather donations, and they, they go directly to the people of Sulu. You know, they, hindi, uh, yung, kung ano man ang financial or, fi, uh, or ano, goes, kaya if you notice, if you look at his web, uh, his Facebook page, our Facebook page, we are very transparent with all the things that are given to us. As Sultan, is it His Royal Majesty or His Royal Highness? During the time prior to before, we were trying, we, they always used His Royal Highness. So, kasi this was in conjunction to uh, what they've been practicing for a long time. And mm -hmm. mind you, they only used that during the time of uh, uh, the Europeans because they didn't really have those time terms of yeah. terminologies. And Ampun, as we call him, is actually translated in Taosug as my lord or my highness. So it started during the time of Sultan Wedzul. We wanted to elevate his status because what they used in the south during their colloquial activities or is, is actually called Roy, your royal majesty among them sila sila yan ang tawag nila so inofficialize lang namin yan kasi hindi na ginagamit yung royal highness uh, para sa mga anak yun so tinaas siya and, and of course therefore his wife uh, to his royal majesty so he started using that uh, just a few years ago so just because that is the, the practice among even with the uh, other uh, traditional sultanates in of Lanao or of uh, Maguindanao, kanya-kanyang practice yan. So we decided to create our own, which is of course 
His Royal Majesty. Um, it, it, it is actually a little bit of uh, uh, to, to differentiate him from the others. That is a, that is something that we wanted to do specifically for Sultan Wenzul because we don't want to call him His Royal Highness for the others calling themselves their His Majesty. So specifically, His Royal Majesty. So we wanted to make sure that he was the only one using that particular style and address. Para hindi gayahin iba. Why are there so many sultans of Sulu? What is the Royal Council of the Sulu Sultanate? Fortunately, when his father died in 1986, uh, this, as you know, was also a time of difficulty for the uh, Republic of the Philippines. Um, so they did not honor the continuing lineage, uh, despite the proof of genealogy uh, going back to hundreds of years um, uh, of the Kiram uh, family. Um, and at that time, he was very young to assert himself. So his relatives, uh, some of them took over his position as uh, the Sultan of Sulu. Hence, you have many sultans claiming to be many of his relatives uh, mm -hmm. maybe to be the, uh, the sultans of Sulu but as you know uh, yeah, and you have probably research as well uh, Sultan Muadzul is recognized not only here in the Philippines uh, but as well as by other royal families around. so a few years ago to keep the peace uh, there the claimant sultans in Sulu who are living in Sulu there are several of them uh, uh, that have some sort of claim. So to keep the peace and the infighting uh, low, um, that the, the then uh, decided to, okay, let's just all work together for our people. Uh, of course, Med Zulail Tan Kiram, our Sultan, uh, said, all right, you know, out of respect for these older people, because they were technically older than him. Mm -hmm. uh, despite they know the truth behind it, they said, okay, let's keep the peace. But that has since been disbanded, uh, so-called uh, council. But this is no longer the case. Although there is no official uh, settlement or whatever, there is only one legitimate sultan now uh, recognized by the local government of Sulu. And as well as the uh, armed forces of the Philippines. Speaking of other claimants, how is Sultan Wedzul's relationship with them? Uh, the ones, at least the ones in Sulu, you know, uh, like I mentioned earlier, they're mostly older than him. Alam mo respeto na lang sa matanda, as we put it like that way. They all know. They all know. But of course, they want to claim as well. You know, you go to Sulu, they would probably, there would be several factions and, you know, kasi kamag-anak siya ni ganyan, kasi you know, tao siya ni ganito. So that's, they have, they, they are very loyal. The thousand people are very loyal. So despite knowing the truth sometimes, they will still follow because of their undying loyalty to a certain person. Which is exactly what happened in 2013 when the Sultan's uncle, um, mm. quote unquote, went to Sabah with yeah. his uh, relatives and supporters. He himself, for the longest time, sat as the regent Sultan. The regent sultan of Sultan Wedzul. And even Sultan Wedzul acknowledges this fact that because at that time, uh, he he was much older. Tito na yon, And he said, ako bahala sa'yo, lang ka lang. And, and for about 20 years, most people recognized him, uh, Sultan Ismail at that time, was the sultan of Sulu. But well, in fact, he was sultan regent. What have you done to have the government recognize Sultan Wedzul Kiram's legitimacy. A few weeks ago, we even had a, uh, an online conference with um, uh, Senator Miguel Subiri um, and and uh, many others uh, who cannot officially recognize him because the President of the Philippines does not officially recognize him yet. Uh, we were referred already to the NCCA uh, by the Office of the Executive Secretary precisely for this reason because we wanted a clear path towards uh, how the officiality of uh, his position at the Sultan, Sultan of Sulu. Uh, and as you know, this is a very sensitive topic because of the ongoing um, issues with Malaysia. So even the President who has actually 
promised during his 2016 uh, campaign was to recognize the, the issues of Sulu. That said, um, that has not happened. But we're still thankful because the, the Office of the President and under the, under the Executive Secretary uh, recognizes this importance and has forwarded us to SSCA. And the SSCA recognizes an executive order that was issued in 1974 relating to the father of Sultan Medjulayn Tanjiram, which is Sultan Mahakuta. So, and they, of course, recognize his legitimacy indirectly. Um, but that said, um, we still don't have that official black and white from the president, which we are hoping down the road, uh, the next president uh, will have, I'm sorry for the word, the balls, um, to, to continue what the former uh, government of the Philippines promised the, 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 the people of Sulu. Do you believe that there will be a time that the NCCA will acknowledge officially the Sultan of Sulu as they did with the enthronement of the 25th Sultan of Baguindanao in 2005. Again, I cannot speak for um, NCCA on, on how they, they are going to do things. Let me see if I can share with you the letter from uh, the National Historical Commission. If you're seeing, this was addressed to our commercial and cultural representative, uh, Dr. Sanjak Kevin Limpoko, uh, who represented us in this project uh, under my royal office as the royal ambassador. So if you are going to read this, this is from NHTP, which is, of course, higher than the NCCA. Mm -hmm. NHTP is the commission that handles pretty much the history of the Philippines. Okay. So in, in this original letter, if you notice, uh, it uh, addressed to the president last February, which received by the executive secretary. Uh, and then the executive secretary uh, forwarded this official to the NHCP. Because, uh, as you notice, it is a political question. And here's the very important part that I would like to uh, mention. I will uh, cover that. So, that based on our research, uh, was originally recognized by Justado Makapagal in the 60s. Uh, Sultan Ismail Kiram is the grandfather of Sultan mm -hmm. Wetzulah Ismail Kiram. Uh, his son is Sultan Mahakuta. Um, so there is co complete lineage. Yeah, we, we, there is no denial that this has been done. And this is what I was mentioning earlier, Memorandum Order Number 427 on May 1974. And specifically, it says in that memorandum, to state that the government has always recognized the Sultanate of Sulu as the legitimate claimant to the historical territories of the Republic of the Philippines. Considering that past presidents have already adopted the policy regarding the matter, we believe that only the president of the Philippines himself has the sole and, and exclusive prerogative in order to uphold or choose the policy, etc. So, basing from this, from Dr. Escalante himself and carbon copied and uh, Yusek Bernabe. So, this is um, short of saying that they agree with the history yeah. and the, the, mem the executive order already. So if you're saying that the NCCA or the NHCP or even the Office of the President, um, they have this is already official. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this one, a uh, particular photo uh, which officially showcases, no? um, I, 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 we have not yet gotten the copy from Manila Bulletin, so we're still trying to request from them uh, the official photo here. So, if you notice, this is a copy in 1974, May 28. Mm. All right. So he, there was an official courtesy call um, with the president at that time. And here you see Raja Buddha, Datum Wedju Lail Kiram. Okay. Uh, Kuwad is the brother, younger brother of Datu Mahaputa, or but he was never Raja Buddha. Raja Buddha means heir apparent. So the recognition of President Marcos was actually a continuation of the recognition of the former of president. The Kasi may iba may binaduktot yung history at ginawa nilang political historia na uh, um, si Sultan Mahakuta was uh, under uh, President Marcos or a, 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 a sort of crony, etc. He was not. President Marcos actually supported uh, the, the previous recognition of President Justado Macapagal in the 1960s. He was not even president at that time. So this was a continuation. 
as you know, yung Tarsila, ng, ng mga Muslim, yes. uh, are very different from the, the way the, the record books are written in, in, in family history. But these are actually family history. Some are written, some are bookally transferred, so there has been some changes. But one of the proud things that the Sultanate of Sulu has is the continued Tarsila of the different families, and they are intertwined. And that, that, that is why, if you notice, may mga photographs pa of the different Kiram uh, sultans of the, of the Kiram family. Um, so, yung iba lang, if in, before 1986, wala kang maririnig the claimant hmm. to the Sultanate of Sulu na, na so, nakamukha ngayon na magulo. Kasi lahat yan nangyari lang after the... 1986 uh, government uh, assumed, no? Was it ever considered by the various claimants to follow the style of Malaysia's rotating monarchy? That is the ideal uh, concept behind it. But unfortunately, the Sultanate of Sulu has always been just an absolute monarchy. Even if you want to go to a federal style of system where you have different sultans, there has always just been one sultan. So if you start saying that there are several sultans, then you're saying that uh, tama yung claims nila. What bars the sultan from being recognized? So, Section 31 of the 1987 Constitution, no law granting a title of royalty or nobility shall be enacted. So that, I, well, I, I was very young at that time. I couldn't remember kung ano man ang kanilang reason kung bakit nila sinigit yan. Uh, but that particular section, basically destroyed uh, any chances of the Sultanate of Sulu or any, or any of the traditional Sultanates in, in the Southern Philippines uh, to be recognized because if the president, ito nga, may gray area yan, you know? uh, because you know, let's say for example the president issues an executive order, it may not exactly be a law but it can be considered a, a precursor to yeah, a precursor to a, a presidential decree. So thereby, conflicting with Section 31. Kasi ang hinihingi lang naman namin is reinforcement of a previous memorandum order issued by a former president. This one is from, of course, although this is as confidential, I am sharing it to you. Okay. Uh, this is from Deputy Private Secretary of uh, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall, just last April. So this is uh, specifically addressed to Sultan Wenzul. Um, of course, it does not specifically say the recognition of the Prince of Wales to Sultan Wedzul. There is no such document that says that. But they recognize, and this is not the only letter. We have several letters in the last few years addressed to Sultan Wedzul. Hmm. Um, and y- yun nga yung ano namin, uh, consideration namin, yan. So, official yan. Nakasulat yan. So, this is an official mail. We have we have our representative office, or representative address in London for our international efforts, not just for oh, the British okay. royalty. Um, so that is officially my office. Of course, I'm not there. I'm here. <laughs> uh, but all our international uh, efforts are are addressed there. Um, ito yung, yung last year uh, from. Uh, you notice this was from the Prince of Monaco, hmm. Mommy of Rwanda, the titular king of Rwanda. Hmm. Uh, but this, was, this was addressed to me at for, for the Sultan. Uh, so the king of Rwanda, the titular king of Rwanda, uh, awarded His Majesty. Uh, the Royal Majesty, uh, a new order, a membership in the order. So, and the titular king of Rwanda follows legitimacy as well. He is the uh, nephew, if I'm not mistaken, of the former king of Rwanda. So, hindi sila claimant. Wala. Walang iba na claim sa, sa throne of Rwanda. So, si Emmanuel Bushigia, uh, is officially the king of Rwanda. See you in the same. In 2013, that document, naglilabas yung government ng document sa mga 
uh, clay mats ng Sultan mm-hmm. si Luke. Uh, although they it was not an official possession of the government, but more or less, this particular uh, uh, this particular uh, document showcases yung yung ano yung genealogy, no? ng mga yeah. iba ng mga ano. So out of this, Sultan Mawal Wasit, uh, Ismail Kira Masuradi died, yung grandfather yan. So si Dato Kuwat, and these are all the other claimants. If you notice, ito lang yung mga pinapansin namin, so to speak. <laughs> Kasi mm. sila yung kamag-anak talaga eh. Diba? Mga kamag-anak yan. According to this, si Sultan Medzul ang specific yan nandyan. What is the status of our claim to Saba? Uh, as far as we are all concerned, Saba is part of Sulu. Um, the Sultanate of Sulu. It has always been and it will always be part of the Sultanate of Sulu. Yung mga ibang detractors, sinasabi nila, wala nang powers yung Sultan of Sulu. Dahil according to uh, the Kiram Bates Agreement, if you're going to follow that, uh, dirilinquish ng Sultan of Sulu yung, yung kanyang uh, uh, powers. Mind you, if you read that agreement, he did not relinquish his temporal powers. Uh, which means uh, he can still consider himself the head of the Mohammedan Church mm-hmm. uh, of the Philippines, not just Sulu. So he's the head of the Mohammedan Church for all Muslims in the Philippines. Aside from that, doon, ang pinag-uusapan lang to the territories was the ones that are part of the Philippines and not the ones given or sabi nga na Malaysia, sold to the uh, them to the to the to the British uh, uh, protectorate at that time. Mm-hmm. So, dahil least lang yon. Yeah. Uh, as as far as this, uh, we are concerned. That is least. No. Uh, hindi yun, it was never so. His his legitimacy as the Sultan of that of Sabah is it, is still part of Sulu and North Borneo. Kaya ang title niya is Sultan Sultan of Sulu and North Borneo. Who is the Sultan's Raja Muda? Who are the current royal family of Sulu? Uh, the eldest son, and then uh, may, may, ngayon hanggang third heir apparent. Kasi nga ayaw na, ayaw na ginawa ng Sultan na naging uh, uh, issue nga yung family. No? Uh, so this is the current family photo. Um, this is the heir apparent. Mm. And this is the second heir apparent. And then the third and the fourth. <laughs> so, ah, so, 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 meron talaga, meron ng official na uh, magkaka, ayan. If, you, if you notice here, so the Sultan, his wife, Raja Muda Esan, and then Maharaja Adinda, which is the second heir apparent. Mm. And, uh, we, we have Maharaja Leila, which is the third, and Dato Mujahid, hanggang fourth. So, ginawa namin na kung may mangyari man sa second, sa first era pa rin, meron kang second, may third, hanggang may fourth ka. So, hindi na papupunta ever, so to speak, no? Uh, sa brother ni uh, Sultan Wedjun, which is Dato Ildon. This is Dato Ildon, Sultan Wedjun. So, uh, I'm hoping that uh, for those who are going to watch your uh, uh, channel, sana masuportahan yung mga kapatid natin dyan sa Southern Philippines, not just the Sultanate of Sulu, but the Sultanate of Maguindanao, Sultanate of Lanao as well. Um, I'm finally have been part of the history of the Philippines. Um, so, we're hoping that many of us uh, Filipinos understand the fight that they have been doing. You know, they've been fighting for their rights for more than a hundred years now. Uh, and it looks like hindi naman, hindi, it will not stop anytime soon. So we're hoping that the mga viewers mo, uh, will be able to the uh, Royal House of Sulu, uh, Sultan Wedzul uh, and his family.